During one of my short videos uh, a couple of weeks ago, I got a question from a subscriber, or at least I believe they're a subscriber from a organization called Stress Less Financial. And he asked me, how do you, what strategies do you use to prioritize your time? So I thought that was a great topic for a video. So I wanted to go into that in the detail because I know that's something that a lot of us struggle with in terms of just managing our time. And I think whether we're retired or not retired, this still becomes a challenge. And so I start with a couple of uh, pieces of, of framework around this. One of them is, and I talk in, in this video, the original video, uh, that the biggest trick the devil ever played was convincing the world that he doesn't exist. And, and that really becomes uh, kind of the devil in the detail of time management. We don't think about our time as necessarily being important because we're managing everything around it. We want to make sure we have enough time to, to play with our kids. We want to have enough time to eat dinner. We want to have enough time to go to dinner. We want to have enough time to date. We want to have enough time to spend with our spouse. But what we don't think about is that the one common denominator in all of that is our time. And so we've been conditioned to not even think of our time being as important as it is when time is our most important resource. And you have to value your time over your money. Um, you know, early retirement is about, you know, controlling your time, not controlling your wealth. You don't need to micromanage your dollars and cents. Those will micromanage themselves. And the reality is, is as afraid as you are of becoming broke in retirement, the chances are it's probably not going to happen because all of the planning that went into it ahead of time. And so it's really about managing your about managing your time. And, you know, you really have to prioritize your time. Uh, time is a non-renewable resource. And, you know, as you lose it, you have real permanent uh, consequences. But, you know, if you prioritize your time over your wealth, then you've satisfied the number one key to having a, a fulfilling life. And so today, what, what I want to talk about are the five uh, most uh, the most effective strategies I've used uh, for setting my and maintaining my time boundaries. Um, as soon as you retire, then everybody needs help. Everybody wants to talk. Everybody knows you're around. And everybody wants your time. And so there was there are very specific strategies that I had to help manage my time. Um, you know, setting boundaries like most other things are, are often easier said than done. It's easy to say you want to set boundaries, but when you're dealing with family, when you're dealing with close friends, it, it becomes difficult. So I started with uh, three clear and, and simple guiding principles. And then stay tuned for a pro tip at the end of the video, because this, I think, is a game changer that's really going to help with managing your time. But before we get into the nuts and bolts of it, i just like to ask that if you are finding any of this information useful, any of the content useful, uh, please consider subscribing to the page. Um, hit the like button, subscribe to the page, and, and hit the notification bell uh, because that notification bell makes sure that you're made aware when I make new videos, and I make new videos uh, every twice a week on uh, <clears throat> Wednesdays and Saturdays. Um, and then the, the other thing I would encourage you to do is if you want to have a little bit closer of a relationship with me, um, you can always send me, uh, you could, I'll, I'll put down, if it hasn't come up already, the QR code to my Instagram account, and you could follow me on Instagram. And uh, if you have questions there, you could, you could send me a, a, a direct message or, or something of that nature, and we could communicate on a particular topic, or if you have an idea for content that you don't want to share in the comments. So let me know, and then we'll, we'll stay connected. But anyway, when you, when you start thinking about uh, putting boundaries around your time, there's, there's, I, I mentioned there's three guiding principles that I have, and they function really as the gate to determine whether or not I'm even going to consider spending my time on something. So there's the process of actually spending my time, and there's the process of considering, am I even going to think about it? So the first question I ask myself is, does it spark joy? Is it something that I want to do? Sometimes you get into those things where you you know you you're you're gonna do them and you know there's some angst or you know it's gonna create a little bit of stress. So why even do that when I own all of my own time? I do what the hell I want to do. Um, the the next question I ask myself is you know does this activity uh, further my personal mission statement of uplifting the human condition in any way that I can? Uh, sometimes you know it's funny because there was there was something that happened. 
And I can't remember where it was, but my wife and I were talking about it. And I think I want to go cuss the person out. And I was adamant that I was going to go cuss the person out. And my wife says to me, well, honey, if you do that, how's that uplifting the human condition? And I said, you know, it's not. So then I didn't do it. So, you know, that cuts both ways. But I asked myself, if I'm going to do something, because again, everything a person does that's necessary may not necessarily spark joy, but if it's uplifting the human condition, at least it deserves consideration. And then, you know, the last question I asked myself is, you know, does this activity or the thing that I'm engaging in, does it make me a better human being? Does it make me a more compassionate or a, a more caring or a, does it just help me grow as a person? And if the answer is no, then, then I don't do it. In fact, if I can't answer yes to at least one of those three questions, I don't even give it any consideration, period. Because if I let it in, then I'm considering it. So does it spark joy? Does it uplift the human condition? Does it make me a better person? And then once something is introduced as a possibility, then I, I deal with, a, I have about five different strategies that, that I use to, to manage those. Um, so number one, you know, I maintain a daily routine. If I know what it is that I'm going to do for specific periods of time, then that boxes out those periods of time. I have a regular wake up, uh, wake up time and bedtime. I'm usually up anywhere between about 7.30 and 9.30. And I'm usually in bed anywhere between 10.30 and 12.30. Uh, it doesn't have to be precise because I'm not getting up and doing anything specific. But, you know, and I, I, but I plan my days with a mix of activities. I have exercise. I have my, my hobbies like gardening and the piano. Um, and then even my social, my social activities and, and my relaxation. So I try to maintain a daily routine that's not so strict that I can't add other things to it. But I know what I'm going to do on most days of the week um, as that day gets, gets started. Uh, number two, uh, I prioritize my activities. Um, I focus on the activities that are most important to me, like spending time with my wife, exercising, gardening, music, spending time with close friends and family. When I'm looking at two or three different things, I make sure that I prioritize that. I want to make sure, like, for example, I think you know that um, a few weeks ago or last week, I went to... Um, I went to Southern California to my niece's graduation. It was really important. So there were about three or four other things that could have been going on in that week and weekend. But what was important to me was that I was going to be there because it's it's my young niece who's overcoming certain odds and, and graduating from college. So I'm going to be there. So I prioritize that. But then there's other people that want me to come by for a house party. They want me to do something like that. And I, I just don't have time for that. And so I, I don't do it. Uh, number three. Uh, I limit my commitments. I don't do everything. Um, I had a friend this weekend who had mentioned that, you know, he was going to come by and then he asked about going out to this place. And I said, I, I don't really feel like going out uh, because I, you know, if I, if I'm spending time with somebody that's already going to take energy and then to go out and go drink in and do all that, then it's just, it's too much because then I know I'm not going to feel good the next day. And I'm in a situation where every day is Saturday. So I don't, why would I want to mess up a Saturday? So I, you know, I limit my commitments. You know, I can, you know, I, I only consider invitations that pass the original screening uh, in the beginning, because how many times do we know we shouldn't go someplace we go anyway, and then we get frustrated that we went. So I don't want to be that guy anymore. Um, and so I don't, I don't go. I, I never feel obligated to say yes. Uh, you know, my time is really mine to manage. And if other people don't like it, I can't really control that. That's not my problem. It's their problem that they don't like the way that I'm managing my time. But it's, it's, my, it's my time to be managed. And sometimes, as I like to say, you're just going to have to be mad. Um, and the other thing I, I don't do is I don't let other people's lack of planning uh, become my emergency. You know, people wanting to drive by. You know, I got a, I got a message last week where somebody says, oh, so-and-so is in town. I want you guys to meet. And it's like, oh, I don't have time for that because if you knew this person was going to be in town, then why didn't you let me know ahead of time? And then we could plan ahead of time. And if it were that important, then it would have come up sooner because at this point in time, I'm doing something else. And, it's, and because there was no planning, it does not create an emergency 
for me. And if, if, if it's not an emergency for the other person, it's certainly not an emergency for me. And so all those drive-bys and the whole, well, you know, I was in the area thing. Unless, unless you're a person who has a, who has a carved out position in my life and you know it and you are aware of it, and I would let you know ahead of time, then that doesn't work. And the fact is, is I get people all the time that'll come to my house and they'll knock on the door and they'll say, oh, well, I'll just see if they're home. And they do that and guess what they get? They don't get an answer. Why? Because my time is my time. Just because I have free time doesn't mean that I'm giving it all away um, that same way. And so, you know, but again, I have, I have commit limits on my commitments. I don't say yes to everything. I don't do everything. I do what I want to do. And it has to, it has to spark some joy or uplift the human condition or make me a better person. It's, it's just, it's just the way that it goes. Um, number four, I, uh, I create personal time. I set aside time for self-care and, and things that I like to do by myself. One of the things I really love doing, and I think if you do go to my Instagram uh, page at Ask Sabado, you'll see I love gardening. I love growing things. I like to say I'm loyal to the soil. Um, I enjoy playing the piano, though I haven't played as much as, as I wanted to. Um, I enjoy putting together this YouTube channel. I, I think it's great that, um, you know, I go on the analytics and I see that in the last month, I've had 17,000 people look at these videos. Some people may have liked the videos. Some people may not have liked the videos. That's okay because there's a piece of information that people didn't have before they got on the video that they're, that they're able to use. And so again, it's, it's, it's things that I enjoy that I like doing by myself and creating the time to be able to do that. And then I let others know when I need, when I need time. Sometimes you know, people will want to hang out and I say, I, I just don't feel like it. I'm just going to hang out by myself today or I'm practicing the piano, or I'm, I'm doing something, or I'm, sometimes I'm just busy. It's not up to me to make everybody else comfortable with how I'm spending my time. It's about other people being able to understand that my time is valuable enough for them to be able to respect the fact that I just can't do what it is they're asking me to do. Uh, number five, and the last one is, you know, using technology wisely. You know, it's funny. Sometimes I sit down and, and as I do research and I'm looking at YouTube channels, I realize how much time goes by. I look at Instagram, I realize how much time goes by. So what I find myself doing is I set limits on my on my on the TV and the computer and, and all my devices because I don't like the fact that my time just gets sucked away into these devices. Um, and I make sure that if I'm doing one thing, I'm not on the phone. I'm doing that other thing because, again, I'm only doing things that I really want to do. And if I don't want to commit that amount of time to do it and not be distracted by a cell phone or an iPad or, or something like that, then that means that's pro I don't probably don't want to do it. And my time would be better spent trying to find something I want to do at that time. And you know, the other thing I try to do is schedule device free periods, um, just certain times of the day. So like right before I go to bed or, you know, right when I get up, just so I could I could continue to, uh, to to manage that that mindfulness. I, I just want to, I think it's always important to be mindful and to be thoughtful about, you know, your own mental space and understanding where you sit with yourself at any given moment. Uh, because I think that, I, I think that helps put you in a, in a place of peace uh, with yourself. So uh, those are the five, but as I, as I mentioned, um, I do have a pro tip that I think will help each of you. So I'll share that with you now. And my pro tip, one of the things, because my wife and I have this concept of, you know, we're both two different people with different activities that come together so that way we can grow as individuals. Uh, what that creates sometimes is that those activities that we do do together can sometimes create conflicts with different stuff. So what we did is we keep, a, my wife and I keep a shared family calendar on our iPhones so we don't overlap each other's commitments uh, or double book activities. And so all my other activities are in the red and the blue and all that, but the yellow ones are the activities that go together. So when I'm playing golf, I put the tea time on that. When I'm going grocery shopping, when there's an errand in the run, when there's a doctor's appointment, things like that. Not because we're managing each other's time, but because what it does is it allows, we understand how important it is for each of us to have our own time. And so what this does, is it keeps us from overlapping because if you overlap and you bump against each other too much, 
then somebody's going to feel a sense of resentment that they're not important enough. But if you already have it scheduled out, then it's easier to schedule around it. You don't run into that issue. So that's a pro tip. I know a lot of people don't want to feel like they're being watched and all that kind of stuff. What's that song? I always feel like somebody's watching me. Well, if that's your problem, then I don't have much to say about it. But this is an excellent way to make sure that your calendars don't overlap. And you'd be surprised, at least I'm surprised, with how much, uh, how, 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 how much stress that's eliminated because it's not as though me doing this is taken away from any time that I'm going to spend with her and, and so on. So, so again, so by setting and respecting, you know, these boundaries and, and creating the boundaries, you know, I've been able to create a, a fairly balanced and satisfied retirement life. And, you know, I'm able to pursue my interests, uh, maintain my social connections. And I, I've got a, a group of friends that I'm with and really take care of my well-being. And I'm, I'm usually in a, in a pretty good spot. So, again, you know, let me know. Um, let me know what you thought about the about this content. Leave me a note in the comments and then. Um, let me know where you're from. I'd like to know where people are from. I know that there's people from all around the country and all around the world that are watching some of some or all of these videos that I'm putting up. But let me know. Uh, let me know where you're from. I, I'd be interested to know. But on that note, I think we're uh, I think we're done. So have a good rest of your day, and we will talk soon.